Today, I want to talk to you about two theories that need to influence your teaching, cognitive load theory and the cognitive theory of multimedia learning. Now, cognitive load theory is a theory that addresses how we acquire biologically secondary knowledge, that is, information that we haven't learned to acquire as we've evolved as humans. For example, the ability to read and write. Unlike walking or learning to talk, these are skills that we have evolved to learn without direct instruction. Secondary knowledge like reading or writing has to be taught to us explicitly in order for us to learn those skills. So how does cognitive load theory relate to this? Well, the idea behind cognitive load theory is that the kinds of information encountered in the learning processes result in one of three different types of processing in the brain, extraneous load, intrinsic load, and germane load. Now, extraneous load or extraneous processing is the work or load generated by the way the material is presented. Now, this is information that doesn't support our teaching or our learning goals. For example, when a teacher is talking over a slide presentation and they have excessive text, that can be a part of the extraneous load. So teachers can reduce extraneous cognitive load by the way in which we organize and deliver our instruction. Then we have intrinsic load. This is the inherent difficulty of the material itself, and this can be influenced by prior knowledge of the topic. Now as teachers, we can reduce the intrinsic load by breaking down the subject content and teaching subtasks individually before being explained together as a whole. The idea is, let's not overwhelm a student too early in the introduction of new content. And finally, the germane cognitive load. Now this has to do with the elements that aid information processing and they contribute to the development of schemas. That is, using our working memories to deal with the intrinsic cognitive load. Now, teachers can reduce germane cognitive load for students by scaffolding learning and pacing materials appropriately for students. And that's cognitive load in a nutshell. The second theory that should influence our day-to-day -day teaching practice is called cognitive theory of multimedia learning. Now, the cognitive theory of multimedia learning has to do with our students' ability to construct knowledge from words and pictures. Words can be visual or aural and pictures can be static or dynamic graphics. But the underlying premise is that students learn better when the material is presented in these two modalities. Now with cognitive theory of multimedia learning, there are three assumptions. First, the dual channel assumption, and this posits that we have a visual pictorial channel that processes information that we take in visually. This includes words on a screen, and we have an auditory verbal channel which processes spoken words. The active processing assumption is the second assumption, and this asserts that in order to learn, we have to engage in active cognitive processes, things like identifying and selecting relevant material, organizing that into visual and verbal models, and then integrating those new models with prior knowledge. And the third assumption is the limited capacity assumption. This suggests that we have a hard limit on the amount of information that we can process at any given moment. Generally, we think that's about five to seven chunks of information at a time. Thinking back to cognitive load theory, in some ways, it seems like that's just an extension of the limited capacity assumption. So what does this mean for teachers? Well, the cognitive theory of multimedia learning assumes that when we learn, we have dual channels, we have a limited capacity, and we have to engage in an active processing system. As a result, teachers need to construct our multimedia messages to students in a way that allows us to manage all three types of cognitive load.